paints and kind of dark video we have today huh so well it's because we are continuing our painting session and we are going to finally work on the darks of this uh, miniature now i know that the last time i said that we were going to work on the um, the metallic sword but i realized that we couldn't get to working on it yet until we really uh, work on this dark side of the miniature and now I've already went ahead and did a little bit of uh, glazing over a brown to kind of unify the colors. And we are we needing to focus on the highlights this time around and uh, get each strand going on. I've also uh, went ahead and put a little bit of green glaze on the uh, bottom part of this uh, her dress. And really for the most part of this, uh, this model, we want to make sure that these parts of the miniature that's not uh, shown um due from the light so as we can see that there's a huge difference from the light side of the miniature and then the dark side of the miniature right um right now as it is i actually have lamps um that's um right over here and right over here and there's one directly on the top to actually shine all the way on the darkness so that i can have a uh, a proper diffuse lighting so i can get the uh right colors and shadows for this thing because I, I paint my values directly on the miniature. Okay, so uh, let's just kind of go close and just kind of go a little bit on it uh, at it at a, at a time. So let's just kind of grab my brush. Okay, so we've went ahead and mixed some new grays uh, and we've mixed some skin color. So you want to make sure to get the parts of it and then go down. So in order to kind of get the um, the miniature to really show us what how we are supposed to uh, paint it when it comes to drawing or painting hair, a good way to start is um, to get uh, the impression from where you're most clear and then work your way down. So I'm going to work at this ridge first, just gotta make sure that uh, she's pointing towards the camera and that the camera is focused on the right thing. So there we go. And if you kind of zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it like ridiculously close, I won't know if the camera will be able to zoom in as well. Let me just try to manually zoom it in. There we go. There we go. So now it's really zoomed in. So you guys can actually see um, how the, uh, the hair is portrayed. And I'm actually going to uh, do the whitest lines on the outlines to kind of get the the most out of this uh, miniature's brightness and for that I need a particular viscosity of uh, paint and so I'm making sure that I get this this close to white not quite white uh, skin tone and then I'm going to take this uh, yellow and then I'm going to mix it together to kind of get this uh, ridiculously bright uh, ye <laughs> yellowish white right and I'm going to take a little bit of it at a time, a very teeny little bit. And I'm going to actually work it on the model at this range. So we're gonna grade it really small bits. I actually do need my reading glasses for this. Now, um, a trick that you could do is uh, if you're a person who, who does have glasses, you can actually just get reading glasses uh, from um, a, a store or an optometrist just kind of go at it for me I just want to get this enough that people can see it so we kind of go at it really lightly so I'll probably go at it from this direction first just doing small little sketches small little sketches on the top this is not the brightest lights yet this is actually her uh, the tone of her hair that we want to portray and I do apologize for being really quiet it's because these lines are really small and I do need to focus okay put a little bit more A 
it a bit more here. Going at it in smaller steps. At the same time, you want to keep in mind where the light is coming from. So we don't want to accidentally uh, put too much lighting anywhere. And we are doing this from a black upwards. So it is going to take us some time, but it's going to be worth it. Because painting hair is, uh, for me, drawing hair is a really interesting thing. And notice how I'm stifling. I'm not actually going at it really hard and I'm not picking out every hair. I'm just going after the second or third. Okay. It's because I want some irregular pattern to it. Okay. And we're going to get the top over here where the crown is. Going it real slow. And again, the reason why we don't have all the, uh, the lights on is because we're going to make sure that we get the right values and lighting. Because with this miniature, um, the m number one thing that I'm focusing on is to get the, the impression and the lighting of it right. Because if the believability of the, of the miniature is not there, then it's not, this effect is not going to work. I am painting, whoops, I am painting in really small ounces. Um, and so if you are watching this video at all, like I'm really thankful because it's not the kind of normal YouTube video that everybody is okay with watching. So you've got quite a lot of grit if you're watching this video. Just want to say that. <laughs> and that's actually a, it's actually a good thing. To have uh, such attention span when it comes to looking at art. Um, for me personally, I tend to break down watching live streams of you know, my favorite art, uh, miniature artists and favorite artists uh, once in a while. Um, do chunks of a of a stream so that I can watch it in episodes because I can't watch the whole thing. I generally just can't watch streams on time, so. Now we are working our way down the value scale. We're just adding this, being extremely careful about where we place our lightings. You don't want to have this too wet or too glazy because it's going to make it really difficult for us to get back our color. So we're just going to stifle it on with something that's a little bit more opaque. Whew, okay, this is going to be a quite long video. And I don't actually find it annoying at all because personally I love painting hair or drawing hair. Especially on Asians um, with curly hair, because you just get a lot of color gradations from um, anything from, especially if they dyed their hair, you can get like blonde to brown and blue. So, those are some really interesting colors once uh, to put together. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need something a little bit more saturated for this one. So going at it like this. I don't know if this hair is braided. It doesn't seem like it's braided. So I'm just going to be safe and paint it smoothly. Paint it downwards. Paint this one downwards as well. This one is a little bit too cool of a color. I'm not quite sure why. But we're going to remedy that. by putting on this yellow and we probably need to go at it with a little bit of orange 
that's that's way too thin, so we're not gonna use that paint. Let's take this instead. A little bit more. A little bit more than that. Okay, there we go. Still a little bit too thin that paint. But it's just enough. We can take this brown that's darker instead. Red is a red. Color is a very funny thing to work with because of the uh, the matter of color relationships. If you're looking at a green that's next to a magenta, it'll look more green rather than if you put it next to a yellow. It's a funny thing I love about color. Let's add this magenta here a little bit the underside and notice how I'm not going to the top I'm just going at the under okay add that red that's being reflected by the light and we wanna instead of drawing like a black line we wanna do it with our our blues over here You want to get a just a teeny little bit tint, not too tight, something like this. I'm gonna draw it in so you can kind of see what I'm doing, and I'm genuinely taking my time um, painting this hair because the hair is going to be a very important part of the miniature. I mean, the whole miniature is going to be important, but. The hair, if like it's if it's done properly and perfectly, then it's going to be a very noticeable part of the miniature. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing up until as far as I can. But in order to speed up the painting of this miniature itself, I'm probably going to have to do it on my own time because it's actually the one of the most time-consuming parts of this uh, model. And unlike the other uh, vlog videos, it's not exactly the most informative one other than just, just gonna freehand it uh, and paint it like hair. So I'm probably gonna do two videos of this, uh, just to be fair, and to kind of demonstrate what I'm doing. But kind of take it a step back, after anything after that is a little bit too much. For anybody watch really okay so this way I need to add the skin tone and the reason why I'm adding skin tone is going to away from the light again going at it really softly not being impatient to anything seems to be a growth of um, overly saturated miniatures on painting on uh, Instagram and I'm not sure if uh, it like if that's a trend it seems like after uh, Angry Birds all those years ago and mobile games most of the colors that people have been using are overly saturated and perhaps that's something that people like um, I don't particularly enjoy or not enjoy those colors but um, it's that kind of saturation let's zoom out and let's uh, just kind of adjust this before we sorry putting it in autofocus there we go but you can finally work on uh, the sides over here let's just adjust it right go at it step by step Let's just make sure the focus is here is uh, on what we want to see. There we go. So I'm going to work on each piece of hair in teeny but tiny bits. Let's just kind of get this uh, skin tone out of the way, a little bit more thick. There we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's staple that. Staple it some more. I just want to get it into the browns that matters. Okay. She's showing up on the camera. Yes, it is. Although it's very, very shiny because of the satin. I have to put a bit of matte on that. Let's just go ahead and take our matte. Just going to place it on here. Take a little bit more. Place it on. And this way we will also protect the miniature. And we are also going to do the highlights. So you know what? Actually, I might go and do the highlights real quick first. So let's go back to uh, the rim at the top real quick. And we are going to take this uh, skin that we have painted. And she will take this one, which is a bit lighter. And just make sure to even it out first. Okay. And we just want to get a nice low um, tip. So you can see that my tip is uh, really sharp here. I'll show you. And then I will grab it. This in a very small amount, as much as it can allow me to take. Just kind of test it for a moment on my palette. There we go. And do it just on the top, like so. And the reason why I'm doing this, and actually you might, might need a little bit more white. Just a little bit brighter. And so I just want to pick out the brighter spots on the miniature. With this, for example, on this part of the hair. And the rim. Just a teeny little bit will do. Let's kind of twist it towards the top first. Need to make sure I keep this on camera. Some time ago, I stopped um, filming, uh, painting through the camera because I realized it was um, actually slowing down the paint job when it comes to the minor details. So I had to change it away from that. And you just want to get the impression of it, so we're just dabbing it on like this really slowly and uh, just again like painting on any white we can't rush it because if you rush it like the big the big pigments gonna get yeah and gonna really screw over your um, whatever job that you've done at the bottom so I'm done it with a little bit and I need to leave that to dry so let's just go ahead and continue working on with our the back of the miniature And I actually am, I do want to show a little bit of how it moves into the grey, so maybe we'll work on this part instead. On the underside of the hair. So we'll have a, a good example. So I'll go ahead and take this uh, grey first and place it on the bottom here. It's a little bit difficult to see, so we'll just go ahead and add just a bit more white over this light skin tone I'm gonna add a little bit more notice how it becomes like a light skin tone that's ionized we can paint our grays underneath color is always relative it's not really what it seems I love it. So I'm working with tiny little aspects. Okay. You can see that line has already kind of form conformed. To what our miniature, to what our subject is. 
is the second one so yeah we are kind of freehanding each uh, hair and that's okay for me that's just practice take a little bit of skin tone and then here take a little bit more take it a bit at a time Draw in small mounts. One over here. Just want to be extremely careful about the grays I'll be putting on this hair. And I'll finish up a little bit first before going into the next episode because I am afraid that these great working in grey colors is a tricky thing because for a lot of people it requires a lot of uh, color sensibility or sensitivity so that you can really navigate the tiny little soft colors in between like no no two colors are exactly the same in terms of yellow and everything really and it's only when you have put all the colors together do they make it seem really realistic but that requires a lot of mixing skill and knowledge on how to apply those colors so notice how I'm just building it up really softly <laughs> really slowly I do apologize for that snort because I do have sinus issues at night right now it is kind of late building up that yellow putting it only on the edges the light will be able to catch it This is how it's actually taking me a while, and it's because I haven't done hair in this way for a really long time. It's because I've been uh, having to paint um, things where hair was a lot more easier to reach. And with this miniature, her hair is, uh, there's a lot of layers. Which is great. <laughs> Actually, I'm needing that practice anyways. So. Put it in this way, that hair. We should connect it down. So it all comes together. Let's take a bit more of this skin tone and oops. That's a little bit too much. Be a little bit more thin. And if you're ever working with paints that are not thin enough and they tend to mix in with one another, don't worry. Just kinda of take a brush and absorb um, your glaze. Because once you pull away your glaze, it won't be that much of an issue. It'd be like erasing. Because you're just using the brush to absorb the moisture on it. So it just kind of pulls away the paint. So notice how I'm occasionally going on to skin color. If I need something a bit more warm, I might go to orange here for example. Just the edge over here. I am pretty excited to see how this miniature will turn out once in the end. Because there's a lot of things that I want to do for this miniature. And I really love the uh, sorceress that they have for the Petronian line. It's unfortunate that um, I started painting Warhammer so late where 
these miniatures are on a little bit irrelevant. <laughs> right now, it seems like everybody's uh, big face is uh, well, Space Marines. All the time, Space Marines. Which, by the way, has its own fun. But there's just too many Space Marines for me. I kind of like painting other stuff too. <laughs> Going back to our grey. Adding that grey in. A bit of yellow. And we just kind of dab, dab on our yellow in far parts and on top of that grey and how notice how it's already kind of toned down <laughs> and it actually ends up creating a new color by just us doing that and go in the bottom here so we can see that there's a small change in tone I'll turn on the lights afterwards so that we can kind of see how it looks like when there's more lights And this part of the grey will be a lot more easier to work with. And it will still look yellowish, which is brilliant. Because colour is always relative. It's just always relative. It's neither here nor there, and if it has something to say, it says what it wants to say. Put his hair on. Put his hair on over here. <laughs> Take out glaze, mix it in like this, get a little bit more thick. Just want to get it in small amounts of yellow, we don't need a lot. Just to add that small little shine at some places. And we don't need a lot, just need what we need. There we go. <laughs> and we want to make sure we add back our grace, so we'll just brighten this quite a bit. Okay, skin tone, brighten it a little bit more. And then into the darks. And there as well. Here, just want to make sure we bring back the hair. Can finally add this big part. Oops, not enough. It's not thin enough. So make it a little bit more brighter than that. There we go. A bit more, okay. Okay, <laughs> take out gray, gray on the top. Get a bit of this yellow to show, like so. Yellow here, yellow 
right here. You just how I'm just putting on the yellow in really specific areas. I'm going back to all gray. I'm getting that gray all the way down. Over here as well, where we need it. Okay, well, I actually can finally start using the skin tone. Take a little bit more, add that in. There we go. Take out the skin tone because the skin tone is a gray. Just want to thin that out a little bit. Still not thinned out yet. Okay, there we go. So I'm going in the release softly. Alright, let's just uh, kind of take a good break. And let me zoom out and turn on both lights. You read one, two, three. Both lights are turned on. And we have a lot more brighter scene. Now, let's just kind of take a good look. And we're going to zoom in just a little bit. And we're making sure we have autofocus on. And there we go. Um... Just turn our camera for a moment. There we go. Okay, so we can see where our miniature is and um, how we've actually built it up until this point. And the light on the right maybe isn't strong enough to actually show uh, some of the color changes on the miniature. However, the important part is the hair right now. So we look at this hair and it's actually we have this kind of gradient over to the left, which needs a little bit of correcting, but it's on the right path. And we have this over to the back. Now, how is it this over here? Because we haven't done the other parts yet, but if we tilt it over to this area, we see that the lighting is a little bit more correct. And I'll need to place on a blue underneath, kind of like a light line blue to reflect the clothing uh, and all that. But for now, we can see that we're slowly bringing the highlights back in and I just need to put on some very matte varnish and then we're gonna keep going uh, at it like this now I'm going to skip ahead because I know that painting hair and watching somebody paint hair can be a really excruciatingly torture <laughs> um, because it's, it's essentially uh, I used to watch manga artists so I have to do it <laughs> uh, and I had to learn to enjoy the process of uh, watching and doing it myself so I understand how it can be annoying for a lot of people. So I'm just going to skip ahead to uh, the next episode where most of this is going to be done. And so I'll finish the hair up uh, myself first. All right. So, all right. So first off, uh, remember guys to learn from others if you want to discover more of yourself and to lose.